Good evening, everybody. Good night. Or, no, good evening, I think, is what you say when you say hello. Talking Dirty with Maestro. Maestro. Not just numbers. Not just stats. It's, it's about, about what, what they mean. mean. Maestro. <laughs> We're gonna throw this into a movie. See, is that better for you? Educate me. I'm going to send you the information. Talking dirty. Talking dirty with Maestro. Me. Oh, you boy. That's what everybody wants to hear. So I'm glad you do. <laughs> I know. I normally laugh during the start of the shorts, but uh, I'm kind of excited about this particular episode for a reason because I'm going to give you a two for this week because I'm going to do a non traditional recruiting talk here. I probably should have made it a short. But I don't want to. That run in Denver that I talked about a while ago got a chance to see a player, Jordan Canada. I know, I know. But let me talk about her game for one minute, even though she, she might not be the traditional recruit for what we're doing. And I want to talk about her game because if I could take what she did and put together a mixtape of this is how you do this, I think a lot of people would benefit. One, really good choices every time up and down the floor. She recognized her ability. Her positioning on defense was really strong. Of course, everyone's bigger than she is. But you know what she was able to do? She was able to interfere with their presence and lateral movement while, by being what? Being present. And that is something that you try to explain to players all the time. Just because you're... The person you're defending might not have the ball. You can still interfere with the game by being an irritant. She did that excellently. So much so to the point, I think I enjoyed watching her more on defense, how she shift, how she moved, how she got players out of her way. Just that natural presence of being able to put her hand up, move herself around someone, all those little things that make you go, yes, 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 every single time. The other thing that I really liked about her game is when she made a decision. She made a decision with a purpose and she acted upon it. Now, the flip side of that was sometimes it would take her a while to make that decision. And I understand that from being a smaller player looking at the taller players or bigger players around you, you want to be sure that you don't waste any movement. Once she matures into her game, that is going to be such a major plus. When you think about the smaller players throughout the history of basketball that were very impactful, what did they always do? First quick step, regardless if they were going to get hit, blocked, knocked over or whatever, that first quick step with intention, with purpose, going to the rim, going to someone else, going to another spot on the floor, all those things, that's what you want to see in a player like that. And I can see that budding in her game. The other thing about Jordan that I wanted to say, all right, everybody, look at this. Now y'all do that too, was her willingness to get breath on the floor. What I'm noticing a lot with a lot of these runs is that there are a lot of players tend to gravitate toward the center of the floor. A lot of times I'll look up when making a note and I'll see three, sometimes four players crowding the same square on the floor. Now, when I say square, I don't know if your coaches work you this way. A uh, One philosophy is you divide the basketball court up into chess squares, where the squares are. 
you can jump squares as you make your position. So we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this. And that goes back to the whole dog fighting thing that I was talking about many, many episodes ago in another life of the podcast of strategy of where to be when you see this, where to go when you see that, those sorts of things. Well, the one thing that she never did, whenever she was moving without the ball, she never moved to traffic, which is really smart. When you're a smaller player, who's going to see you, right? Who's going to see you in a, in a stack of trees? Again, I can speak to that game. The other thing is when she made that move out in the space, she gave herself plenty of space. She wasn't afraid to step way past the arch. She wasn't afraid to step way past the boundary of where her offense was in order to give, put herself in a better position to do what? To stand to the play to make something happen. And on defense, she even though she was smaller, she was also it was as if the podcast I did on defensive leverage was being played out right in front of me. Eye on the ball, eye on my man. If the ball's on the other side of the floor, I don't have to be two inches from my guy. I can step off some because why? I got plenty of time to react. And it gives me more time to react if my if my man tries to make a move toward the basket. All those things, all those IQ movements, A plus all the way down, Jordan, really dug how you handled your game in a game full of bigger guys. You definitely showed the toughness. You definitely showed the strength. You definitely showed the mental awareness to know where your game stood and was able to put yourself in a position to be impactful on both sides of the ball. Very nicely done. It was really nice to see. And uh, I like to see more of that. I'm just going to be honest with you. I want to see more of that. Really good stuff, Jordan. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Everybody else, you know what the deal is. Get your another seat. Thank you for, for listening, listening to, to Maestro. Maestro. Want to get involved? Bring, Bring it. it. Drop in discord.gg slash simworldnba. If, if you, you have, have the brain, brain, join as a coach. If, if you, you have, have the, the game, game, join as a player. See the game, be the game. Now, back, back to, to Maestro. Maestro. Sorry, we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. <laughs> and welcome back to this half of Talking Dirty. Would you boy? Me. So... The number of second half podcasts that are coming out are all Coach Pope's fault. So y'all go get him, take his phone, shut down his consumer seller, his boost account, his consu whatever he's using, mint, whatever. All right, because he put me to work. So here we go. Let's go on and get started with it. Question came about with doing some talks about help side D. So let's talk about principles and I'm going to try to keep this as succinct as possible. So here's how you guys can help me and always appreciate your feedback as always. Let me know what more of these you want to hear or something you may have not heard about before. So that way I can be more effective in producing material that will help you understand. So I'm always going to try to start out real quick right now with base principles because this is what's going to come back as I talk about some of the other elements, all right? So number one, base principles of help side D. As everything in all sports starts with footwork, whether you are face up or quartered, you know what that means? Face up means we're facing each other face to face, squared up, squared up, or quartered, you're facing me, but I'm turned either to the left or to the right one quarter in either direction, depending on which hand you dribble with, et cetera. Next base principle here is the vision, whether it's open floor or if we were playing football, you would say, is there green grass? In the case of basketball, we'll say, is there open floor or elbows? Elbows is really important because that lets you know if someone has their hands up in defensive position or not. A lot of players pretend like they have their hands up by having their hands out, but their elbows to their side. That's not really what's going on there. And that's a whole nother conversation. So open floor versus elbows. And next is ball flight. And that means, do I follow the ball? Do I jump at the ball? 
or do I meet the ball at its landing spot? So those are some of the base principles that we're, that we're going to keep coming back to. So I'm going to ask you to kind of remember this so I don't kill too much time in upcoming podcasts talking about that. All right. And if you need a refresher, just go and let Maestro know, you know, I'm going to hook you up. Right. So here we go. Let's talk about front court help side D. The key about front court help side D, I know positionless basketball, but just kind of bear with me here. Forwards and centers or anyone that's playing closer to the basket, closer to the end line. And your position is you're usually, for the most part, more of your vision is faced forward to the entirety of the court. If I'm defending my person and I'm on the left side of the goal, that means the goal is going to be to my right shoulder. I'm on the left side of the goal. And I know this, I'm reversing it here just so I can give you the visual. I need to be able to, A, not only have vision of my man and vision of the open court that's in front of me or open floor that's in front of me, I need to have contact. Why? How I defend my person depends on where the ball is. If the ball is to my side, I'm going to have more contact. I can now be more, have more of a presence on top of my, the person I'm defending, whether I front defend or rear defend. If he's really low, I'm going to front defend because now the goal becomes what? It becomes a defender. But here's where help side D kicks in. There's a quick reverse pass. I don't wait to see where the pass is going. I now turn because my man is what? My man is no longer a threat as the ball is in the air moving to the other side of the floor. So I now turn with the ball. Now I can remain, I can keep tangential contact with my person, elbow on them, forearm on them, whatever, as I follow the ball. And now as I follow the ball, I peek ahead to where it's going. Your guys are good enough athletes. You should be able to do this. When I see where the ball is going, now here's my decision. Is there a person on open floor on the opposite jersey coming toward the rim? I give up my man at that point, hoping that my teammate is now reacting to that and is collapsing down or coming over because what is the most important principle? Stop ball. Whenever you're underneath the goal, you want to stop ball. Why? That is the threat. So again, I'm guarding my person, left side of the goal, goal is to my right. The opposite team player makes a cross court pass. I keep forearm touch with my man. I now look to see where the ball is going. Do I see open floor or do I see elbows? If I see elbows, I do not have to move as quick. Why? Because I have a teammate there already. If I don't see elbows and I see open floor, I need to move and make my presence bigger on that side. Why? Because if there's someone cutting into the paint, I need to be there to stop them. The other side of principle is this. Again, front court D, same position on the floor. The ball is at the top of the key. Pass comes in to opposite side. I am going to make the assumption as the ball is moving. Again, you have to react while the ball is in the air. Too many people become spectators and they watch the ball get to where it's going and then they react. You're three seconds too late. As the ball is moving in the air, I then move to the space to occupy either the defense of where the ball is going to land But if I'm moving that quickly, I might have the opportunity to make that steal because, quite frankly, that is a bad pass that, as a coach, I would completely discourage. Again, defending my man, left side of the court, ball is at the top of the key, pass comes in, I then react to the pass, I get there, we can now box in that player, hopefully my teammate comes down, collapses on the man that I had or the the person I was defending, and now I'm getting help help side, but the reaction has to be on the pass of the ball. Lastly, and this is probably the biggest use of help side D, I'm defending my man on the left side. I'm going to keep it in the same spot. Then pass comes into my man. They then kick it back out, top of the key. Now, the person I'm defending no longer has the ball, is no longer a threat. I keep contact, forearm contact. I now look, I make myself big in the middle of the paint. Why? I want to disrupt whatever might be coming into the paint from the other side. So as the low post player, that's how that would work. If I am not the low post player, but the support low post player, let's say I'm the forward. Ball comes in opposite side. Let's say I'm defending the person left side of the court, but now I'm standing opposite side. Okay. I'm standing on the weak side. 
Ball goes into the other side of the floor. I then, because my person I'm defending is no longer a threat, but I need to be aware of where they are. I now cut in into the paint just in case that player makes a move on my man. I'm the backup. I'm the help side D. I'm not standing there waiting for the play to happen. I'm already intruding. If I see open floor, my responsibility to now fill the space. If I see elbows, I direct the closest set of elbows from my team to where? To where the ball is. Again, help side D is reacting to where the ball is going. Generally, it's strong side to weak side or weak side to strong side. But understand, all your emotions have to start where? At the pass, not after the ball has arrived. And that makes the difference between you making an effective play, being a supportive teammate, or leaving your teammate out to dry, and then the opposition gets an easy bucket. Hopefully that helps you a little bit. This is a little bit longer than normal. I know that. And there's a lot more that we can talk about. But hopefully I gave you some base principle ideas of how to handle this in a front court situation. You know what to do. Holla at your boy. Let me know what else you want to hear. Let me know what else you think about. And will somebody answer one question for me, please? I know we call it cheese and rice, but why don't we call it cheese and macaroni? Like I need to talk to somebody. Thank you for listening to Maestro. Thank you again for checking out Maestro. Drop a tag below and give us a piece of your mind. See you next time. Well, thank you for your time. Have a wonderful day.